Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There's a church in the valley by the wild wood. No lovelier place in the jail. No place is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come to the church by the wild wood. Come to the church in the jail. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. How sweet on a clear Sabbath morning to listen to clear ringing bells. Its tones so sweetly are calling. Oh, come to the church in the veil. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wildwood. Come to the church in the dale. No spot. So dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Thank you. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that makes this heart adore you Hope of what life could do So here I am to worship Here I am to lay down Here I am to know that you're my God We're all together lovely Together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Thank you. This is my song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, my country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams. As true and high as mine My country skies Are bluer than the ocean And sunlight beams 
on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, God of all the nations, the song of peace for their land and for mine. This is my prayer, Lord of all earth's kingdoms, thy kingdom come, on earth thy will be done. Let Christ be lifted up till all will serve him, and hearts united learn to live as one. I give the end, thy will be done. Thank you. Pray for peace, please. Y'all stand up and holler out to somebody, good morning, God loves you, and I do too, and happy Sunday. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees and skies and seas his hands the wonders wrought this is my father's world birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, rest me in the thought of rocks and trees and skies and seas, his hands the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oh so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees and skies and seas. His hands, the wonders roll. Thank you. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be our glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high, the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty. 
majesty. Worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is present, where he is, is holy. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is presence, where he is, is holy. We are standing on holy And I know there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. These are holy hands. He's given us hope. He works through these hands, so these hands are holy. These are holy hands, he's given us holy hands. He works through these hands, so these hands are holy. Standing in his presence, we're standing in his presence on holy ground. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame now, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain now. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Pray for peace. Be kind to each other. God loves you, and I do too. Well, hey, Tracy. Give us just a minute. We've got to change these uh, batteries before they go out. Hello, hello. Here we go. Welcome, everybody. How's my union family doing? Good, good. And I want to welcome all of our family online as well. I'm just coming to you with another live 411. I just have a, just a few announcements. First up, um, I just want to thank you guys and our wonderful liaison for our uh, Boy Scout Troop 156. David, thank you so much for just uh, getting that union back together. And we want to thank all of you who uh, were just gracious enough to take those Boy Scout sponsorships. I think there may be one or so that's still um, kind of out there. So if anybody has one of those, please bring them back so we can present that check to our Boy Scout troop. But thank you guys so much for your constant generosity. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. Um, also, our Spring Break Vacation Bible School is coming up. It's going to be the week of March the 14th through the 18th. That's Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And my sister, Ms. Fawn, everybody say, hey, Ms. Fawn. 
<laughs> she uh, just appreciates any help that you guys would be willing to give. And for those of you who have already helped by bringing in those food donations from our shopping list, thank you guys so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. If it's in your heart, if you are led to help and volunteer in another way, please be sure to see her and she can kind of let you know how you can help with that. So we appreciate you guys. And last but certainly not least, today is the day, Sunday, March 4th at 4 p.m. We are going to be blessed with our creative arts program that Jim has done just an amazing job putting together. And I'm telling you guys, it is going to be wonderful. You guys know how anointed he is and the talent that we just anointed within this church. It's going to be amazing. So you're going to really miss out if you don't come. So I encourage you guys to come back at 4 p.m. Bring your friends, family, neighbors. Um, it's truly going to be a blessing. So thank you guys so much. We love you guys, and I pray that you guys enjoy the worship service.
joyful noise to the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk a little later about the power of prayer and how to pray. So let's practice a little bit right now. Maybe you have someone that God has just put on your heart this morning, or maybe it's you, and you need a miracle, or someone else needs a miracle that you love. And this is a house of prayer where two or more are gathered in His name. He is present, and He wants to answer your prayers. So let's pray with faith and power. Heavenly Father, we just thank you to gather in your house again, to have many, many friends here just lifting up our praise to heaven, to be together in faith, to share our burdens with one another, to help carry them, to receive once again the promises of God. We take those promises into our hearts and we live under them. And I pray right now that, that every soul listening at home and every soul here today, that you would claim those promises. We have a book from the God of all creation to you, just full of promises for your life. God wants to provide for you. God wants to protect you. And God has a plan for your life for the rest of your time here on earth. Today, if you're breathing air, you still have things to do that only you can do that will bless the kingdom of God and bless others. Father, right now I want to give your kids a chance to just one-on-one -on -one come to you with their prayer today. So just now in a, a few moments of silent prayer, just you and God as if no one else is in his house, you give that special prayer to him right now. That settles it. God is powerful. And you just gave him control of something that needs to be done, someone that needs his help and healing. And I want you to believe that that's already accomplished. We just thank you, Lord, for all prayer. But this prayer that you taught us, Jesus, this model prayer, we can all say these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
I on? I think I am. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Before we start, let's pray. But before I pray, I want to give one special encouragement to all of you uh, to really bring your friends today at 4 o'clock. And by looking at the audience, uh, most of you, uh, there's one section in here uh, that's actually a, a kind of a tribute to uh, the Vietnam era and some of those old songs. We're using a, a lot of, Jim has put together a program using a lot of secular music to bring Christ's message to the world and how God can use all things. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really, really great program. All ages will enjoy it. So I, I just want to give you that plug back at home. Those of you at home, come on out. Come on out today at 4 o'clock. You're going to miss something. Uh, there's going to be a buzz about this one, so uh, don't miss it. Pray with me. Um, I think that's appropriate since today's sermon is called Why Pray? Okay? And uh, there's a lot of theology, but I'm going to pay particular attention to James. This is the final, uh, the eighth uh, sermon in this series on the book of James. And we'll hear what he has to say. Let's ask Jesus to teach us the power and the connectiveness that prayer brings to us with the God of all creation. Heavenly Father, I always submit this pulpit to your son Jesus. He is the word become flesh. Preachers have words, but his word is right from the source, right from the heart of God. The people you used to write the Bible were anointed, but there is no one like Jesus. The word become flesh. And he taught his disciples to pray. But more than that, Father, he stole away to the quiet places to get recharged, to get hooked up with you. We confess sometimes we make Jesus so much totally God while he was here on earth that we forget that he was totally human. If he needed to pray to you, how much more do we need to pray? Teach us something new today. Every heart here. In Christ I pray. Amen. So we're going to look to the brother of Jesus, uh, Matthew, or James 5, 13 through 20. Are any among you in trouble? Now, don't think about with the law or with your spouse or with your parents or with your children. I mean, are you in trouble just because of the age you are? Uh, you know, you're having a hard time bending over and tying your shoes, so you got loafers now. And then you trip over them trying to slide into them. <laughs> I, you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, are any of you in trouble? Not all of y'all say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. This, then you should pray. Are any among you happy? Yeah, come on. Then you should pray. You should sing praises. <laughs> are any among you sick? Hopefully, if you are, you're wearing a mask this morning. They should send for the church elders who will pray for them and rub oil on them in the name of the Lord. There's power in anointing. There's power in believers praying for you. Mm. This prayer made in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will restore them to health and the sins they have committed will be forgiven. Wow. You're talking about, this is a holistic healing. This isn't just body, what's wrong physically. This is what's wrong mentally, what's wrong spiritually. God is a healer. And to be well, all of those parts of us have to be well, or we are sick. So then confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. It's okay. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. <laughs> if the church is afraid to share honestly with each other, there's something wrong with the church because we live under grace. We live forgiven, but that doesn't mean we live perfectly 
everybody here could confess that you probably said something that hurt somebody or, or you didn't think about something before you said it or you had a nasty thought about what's going on in the world. And uh, yeah, I had those this week praying for those beautiful, beautiful people in the Ukraine and the thug that is assaulting them. And the prayers I had were murderous. <laughs> I, I love to read thrillers, and I think, where is a good assassin when you need one? <laughs> Come on. I'm not the only sinner here. <laughs> the prayer of a good person has a powerful effect. <laughs> and if you know Jesus... You're not perfect, but you are a good person because you're forgiven. And your prayers have a powerful effect. He didn't save you to sit at home and to do nothing. He, he saved you to pray for others, to intercede, to, to be involved. Elijah was the same kind of person as we are. He prayed earnestly that there would be no rain, and no rain fell on the land for three and a half years. Once again, he prayed, and the sky poured out its rain, and the earth produced its crops. He's going back into faith history. My friends, if any of you wander away from the truth and another one brings you back again, remember this. Whoever turns the sinner back from the wrong way will save the sinner's soul from death and bring about the forgiveness of many, many sins. Wow. You a powerful people when you have Jesus because you have the miracle worker in you. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, you get the very DNA of God and there's things that you can't do that now God can do because his spirit is in you and he wants to do them through you, church. And so that's important. So why pray? What's the use? If God already knows everything ahead of time, do my prayers change anything? I mean, come on. If you, if you really are a thinker, huh? how many of you are, are people who ponder? And you ponder spiritual things, and, and you ask these kind of questions. If God already knows everything that's going to happen, do I change anything by praying? Then what's the point of prayer? Okay. There's, those are... Takes me back to seminary days, <laughs> which are a lot different than the altar call in a Pentecostal church. <laughs> we used to call it United Theological Cemetery. <laughs> Can you really change the mind of God? Can you get through? Does He listen to your plans and your desires? George Buttrick wrote, prayer seems like a waste of words lost in a cosmic indifference. He wrote those words in the year 1942 with the world in the middle of a horrible war and a, an evil that was destroying the very first people who believed in the one true God. You begin when you see such intense evil like what's going on in Ukraine right now. You tend to sometimes get a little pessimistic. Amen? You tend to get a little pessimistic when the leaders we put in Washington, both sides of the aisle, can't seem to get together and do anything for you and I. You begin to get a little pessimistic. And so if I sound a little pessimistic, I don't care for either side of the aisle right now. None of them are in my good book. The speed of technology today leaves us with constant pressure to know enough. As if we don't know enough. Aren't your brains ready to explode? I, I, I mean, really. Do you read all that stuff? The ding, ding, your phone goes ding, ding. Do you ever have time to pray if you don't shut the darn thing off? Because you're always being interrupted. And you don't get back to where God was taking you. You're missing a lot by not shutting that thing off once in a while. 
we begin to think that multitasking is a spiritual gift. <laughs> it's demonic. Because you're never fully with us or with each other or with God because you're so busy doing two things and you, and you take pride in that and, and, and the world pr puts praise on your life. Oh, you can multitask. Only God can be everywhere at the same time. And in case you needed to know it, somebody look at your neighbor and say, and you ain't God. <laughs> Ooh. We get jumpy. We're frazzled. We're stressed out. We're anxious. We're tired. We're short of time. We're so into a life that already feels like it's so behind that we'll never catch up. And we have all this technology to help us, supposedly. I, is this generation more relaxed than grandpa and grandma were? Are you more relaxed than your parents were? Or your grandma and grandpa growing up, some of you with no hair or white hair? How do you fit in being relaxed enough and present enough to have a relationship with God? If you did, would it be useful? <laughs> do our requests seem trivial to a very busy God? No, not according to the book, not according to the man. God is intricately interested in your pain, in your life, in your challenges, in your failures, in your stresses. Does God hear every word and move people and things to answer? Those are the questions people ask. And my answer is, before I get into the solution, yes. Yes, God does answer prayers. God does send help. Why pray? Because I can't control very much. That's important to me. Anybody have somebody you love that's sick or, or depressed? Have you ever had a child or a grandchild that was depressed or anxious and their, their, their life was coming apart and you felt so powerless to help? You've got a God that can't help. And before we leave here today, if you have somebody God just made you think of, you put that person in the Heavenly Father's hands. Because you're right, you can't fix them. I can't fix them. You heard my daughter's story a couple weeks ago. And no matter how much you love someone and how much you're there, sometimes you can't take the darkness away. Only God can. And sometimes you can't take the anxiety away. Only God can. And I know that doesn't feel good when you can't fix things that are important to you, but we need to acknowledge that God is way greater than we are. Because we can't help it, whatever it is, we can't help ourselves either. Have you ever had a problem and you couldn't fix it? Right? Right? All the time, all the time. Whew, I, that, that's why I have a wonderful staff and a wonderful wife and a couple of daughters and <laughs> all the king's horses and all the king's men can't keep me all together again. <laughs> but I feel like God put a lot of people in my life so that I can have the time spiritually and emotionally to seek God and to, to give you something fresh every week. That's because there's so many people that are part of every sermon that I, I get the privilege to get up here and encourage you with because, because it's from God, not from me. William James said, I'm an English major, you can tell, we pray because we simply cannot help but pray. <laughs> we can't help ourselves. When the pressure comes and the anxiety comes, well, we can't help. Atheists pray in a foxhole. 
I'll bet you there's a lot of prayer in the Ukraine right now. A Gallup poll said more Americans will pray this week than work out, drive a car, or go to work. According to the poll, nine out of ten pray regularly and three out of four every day. Every culture and every religion on the planet prays for help. It don't matter whether you're a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Jew. I think atheists pray. After all, it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist. I want you to think about that. It takes more faith to believe there is no God <laughs> than when you look at a sunset to believe there is a God. It's amazing to me that anybody can live in this world and observe the beauty of creation. In fact, Jesus said it. If nobody ever told you about me or dad, you have no excuse. All you have to do is look at what we created and you would know our eternal qualities, our character, and who we are. That gives me comfort. I've said this before. I believe no matter where you're born and whatever religion is, is disallowed where you are, if you truly seek God, God will reveal God's self to you. We're going to be surprised by who's in heaven. Aztecs made human sacrifices to get the attention of God. Muslims stop five times a day and face toward Mecca and pray to Allah. People in my recovery program, AA and NA and, and all of the recovery programs, pray to a higher power to establish conscious contact with God, even, as I said, atheists pray. It's hardwired within it. We are created in God's image. And if Jesus, when he was totally human, needed to steal away after a full day of pouring out everything he had and nothing left, and he walked sometimes miles to find a lonely place, and he prayed all night. If Jesus needed to pray all night, there are some nights we need to pray all night. Our souls long to connect, to connect with the one who made us in his image. Even when we're not sure of his true identity, we are drawn to pray for someone we don't even know yet. I bet you prayed before you really fell in love and surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Even people who don't believe in God pray. Even when God seems distant and unknowable and silent, we pray. We pray because we're empty. And we pray because we're grateful. And we pray because we're scared. And we, prayed because we're, we pray because we're powerless. We can't fix our lives. We pray for answers on a test. I read all the material that's up here somewhere, but I can't get it. Because this is like a computer. And everything you've read and every conversation you've had and every book you've read, it's all there. If you could just punch the right button. <laughs> Amen? And the older you get, the harder it is to find the right button. <laughs> and sometimes you're on the wrong computer. Oh, Lord, we pray for a deal to go through when we're young and in business. We pray, we pray for forgiveness and peace. We pray to be healed. We pray for strength and assurance. We pray, we pray, everybody prays when there's turbulence on an airplane. <laughs> Amen? Oh, boy. We can't help it. Yeah, I mean, when there's turbulence in our life, turbulence on an airplane, turbulence in the world, don't you find yourself praying more right now? We are, with, with crazy people, with incredible weapons, 
We could be on the verge of the Third World War. My God is amen right. Jim has an incredible section in his program tonight from the Vietnam era, some of the great secular songs that were written. Yeah, you really need to come. And you really need to invite your neighbors in your parks because this is, a lot of the music is from your generation. You're, you're going to love this program. So let's do it again. Why pray? Because people in the Bible prayed. Abraham prayed for the promise. Moses prayed and changed God's mind. David prayed about everything, particularly his sin problem with women, evidently, and cover-up. <laughs> I always say this. He made Bill Clinton look like Mother Teresa. <laughs> Daniel prayed. Elijah prayed. Mary prayed. Peter prayed. Paul prayed. Jesus prayed over and over. Prayer is keeping company with God. Keeping company with God, what better company, especially when under duress, could we have? When we're powerless, what better company could we keep? When somebody we love is in trouble, where else could we go? Well, we can't fix it. Jesus' abilities and passion flowed out of his time with the Father. That was his lifeline. We make Jesus so divine in his 33 years here on earth that we forget he's, the Bible says he was totally human. And he modeled this for us. If Jesus needed to pray, oh my God, I need to pray a lot more than I do. Why pray? His first followers asked Jesus, could you teach us to pray like you do? Because when you come back from those lonely places, whoo, I mean, at one time, we're in the middle of a storm and you're walking on the water. And our, our buddy Peter actually got out of the boat because you were praying and he walked on the water for a little while too until his fears became greater than his faith. How are you today? Are your fears greater than your faith? Here's what Jesus said. I'm going to read his words a little bit. I can tell right now this may have a part two to it next week. Matthew 6. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Oh, they love to stay up, stand up in their houses of worship. He's talking about preachers. And on the street corners, he's talking about evangelists, so that everyone will see them. I assure you, they've already been paid in full. But when you pray, go to your room. Shut that dog on. Don't take that cell phone with you. You ain't praying if you got that cell phone with you. Because you're saying you're more important than God. And somebody might call. Somebody might call. Well, la di da You aren't God. Close the door. Pray. Pray until the peace comes. Pray until the promises come. Pray until the healing comes. Pray. Pray like Jesus did. Pray until you see God who is unseen, who sees what you do in private and will reward you. And when you pray, don't use a lot of meaningless words as the pagans do who think their gods will hear them because their prayers are long and eloquent. That, that's, that's how I felt when I was a kid growing up in Reformed Church and the preacher would go, oh, is he really for is he for is he for? He could have just well been praying in tongues. Because I, I didn't hear him. They had all these big, long words in them, and, and they were memorized or written down. I, I just want to feel your prayers. 
Because a lot of times I feel like you're praying and the words are coming out of my mouth when we're in church. Because I feel, I feel what you're thinking. I feel what you need. And sometimes you've told me your stories and the Holy Spirit will remind me of you and something that you desperately need to hear and God says it. And sometimes I don't even know where it came from. And I'll bet you've experienced that too. When you finally shut down and shut everything off and shut everything out and shut up, God often gives a revelation or a promise. Do not be like them. Your father already knows what you need before you even ask. This then is how you should pray. Oh, my father, who art in heaven, you're in heaven, but may your name be honored. May your holy name be honored. Oh, may your kingdom come. I don't know what to pray for sometime, but so I'm just praying that your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth. Because I don't know what to pray for sometimes. And you say you're going to use everything for good. So I'm just going to have to trust you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Because I think I cheat myself. Your will be done. I'm going to trust you. Just give me today what I need to get through the day. The food. The encouragement. The people, the sanity, amen? Ever, you ever pray for sanity? Because when you're anxious, you're nuts. When you're fearful, you're crazy. Mm. And forgive me. I know I, I've thought things and said things that I shouldn't have this week, and forgive me. And I, and I pray that I didn't hurt anybody or damage anybody. I live under your grace and keep me safe from the evil one. Because Satan is real. And he gets in your head. And he makes you, he's the father of fear. And he's the father of lies. And you don't want to listen to him. And when you forgive others, the wrongs they've done to you, your Father in heaven forgives you. And why does he say that? Because his forgiveness is not based on your behavior. But you know why he says that? Because forgiveness and grace is not going to become real to you till you learn how to forgive others. You're going to always doubt God's forgiveness because you create God in your own image. And that's why Jesus taught him to pray that way. Not that... Your behavior brings God's forgiveness. Oh, God has already taken care of all your mess. When Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. But it isn't going to, it isn't going to be real to you. And God knows that. Until you forgive. You're going to always doubt that God forgives you because you can't forgive something. And that's why Jesus taught them to pray that way. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be alive. He wants you to know how much God loves you. He's your prodigal, hugging father that when you're at the messiest, runs down the road of your life, throws his arms around you, doesn't want to listen to your confession, and there's a party in heaven. Woo, come on. All that we see too often in churches is this pious, well-rehearsed religion. But Jesus, he received direction and gifts and power when he prayed. Let me say that again. Direction and gifts and power when he prayed. To be a healer, a restorer yourself. He turned the kingdom work up 
into, in that, he turned it into you, not to a bunch of trained professionals who went to seminary. 99% of the work of the kingdom of God is done by common, ordinary believers. You're the ones feeding the homeless, building habitat homes, praying and interceding for others, being his hands in your community and neighborhood. You are the kingdom of God, shakers and movers. And you've got to know this, that prayer is one of your most powerful tools that empowers you, plugs you in, gets you going and keeps you going till you take your last breath. And I guarantee you, if you do these things, when you take your last breath, you aren't going to be holding on to the rails on a hospital bed. You're going to fall back in your pillow and Jesus is already going to be hugging you and taking you home. There is no time lag between your last breath and heaven. Jesus will be there. Why pray? It's effective. <laughs> it changes me. It takes worry away, and I can be my humorous, inappropriate self. <laughs> Not everybody's amused by my humor. <laughs> but, but I tend to laugh at life because the alternative is to cry. And I know too many promises, and I've experienced too many miracles to not laugh in the middle of a storm, to laugh at Satan, to laugh at my fears, to laugh at Washington and the world and the evil because I know who's coming. Oh, I know who's coming back. Mm-hmm. The prayers of a righteous person. And by the way, that doesn't mean you don't have any sin. We all sin and come short of the glass. A righteous person is someone who has invited Jesus Christ into their heart. And then he put his DNA in you. And he clothed you in his righteousness. And you are righteous, not because you're always right, but because Jesus is righteous. And he's in you. Look at somebody right now and say, he's in you. He's in you. He's in you. Don't worry about the program. Jesus is in you. Jesus is in you. Jesus is in you, church, and we can do great things, and we can do the impossible, and we can keep going. Prayer always sharpens my vision, what I see. When I'm under duress, I can be blind to the activity of God all around me. You ever been there, you know, where the pain was so deep that you couldn't feel or see God anymore? <laughs> but God had moved. It's just that we need to pray because it sharpens our vision and all of the clouds go away. And when the clouds go away, the clouds of fear and anxiety and depression and feeling sorry for ourselves and loneliness, and when those clouds, the sun shines. Jesus floods in. And you and Jesus, you can get through anything. You can get through anything. Fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. I have to wear contacts. Because <laughs> believe me, when I was four years old, I couldn't see anything and nobody knew it. My parents took me to a uh, a Disney movie at the theater back town. New Glarus had a theater back then. All, even small towns had theaters. And we sat in the back, and I was so bored, and I was naughty. And then there was a Roy Rogers movie. That's how old I am. Trigger's still my favorite horse. <laughs> and, 
And, uh, and the theater was full, and they had to sit in the front row, and I was like totally engaged. And they took me to a doctor, and they said, he is so nearsighted, he's nearly blind. And for years, I had, a, I had to take off my glasses to go in the swimming pool. And playing tag, I would sometimes tag the wrong person who wasn't playing because <laughs> I couldn't see. <laughs> and I thank God for contact lens. Oh, my goodness gracious. I can go swimming and see what's going on. I don't want to grab the wrong woman when I'm in the pool. <laughs> Right there would be the end of my life. <laughs> Not only the wrong woman, but my wife would kill me too. <laughs> so I'm going to end here with that little bit of humor because I want you to think the last thing, and I'm going to pick it up next week, about what prayer does for your vision, how you see God, how you see tomorrow, and therefore are able to get through today. Because you're going through things. But nothing God can't handle. God gives you that vision. I just realized that this word at the end was for you, Jerry. God is your vision. Will you pray for me? And would you pray for Jerry? Because Jerry's losing her vision. But God doesn't want her to. So let's end this with a prayer for Jerry. Heavenly Father, we'll pick it up next week. You got more to teach us on prayer. But it would be good to end today seeing clearly with our vision on you. Praying, releasing all our fears, releasing all of the anxiety, releasing all of the maybes, the could be's, the maybe nots. Trusting you with them. You can do anything. My God can do anything. Your God can and wants to do miraculous things in your life. And so we give him the clouds in your life. We give Gary, Jerry's vision to him. We give your fears, that one who's depressed, that one who's lost a spouse this year, the one who's lost a child or grandchild and never gotten over it. And God, I, right now, there's lots of people right now just asking you to clear the clouds away that we can see you and your power and your presence and your call upon our lives. In Jesus' precious, precious name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with me?